Okay, so we're going to go ahead and launch Autodesk Inventor uh, 2020. And here it goes. Uh, it might take a second to load. Uh, there are some options that you can um, that you can set inside the program that will make it load faster. Um, but we won't go into those right now. Okay, so when Autodesk first comes up, you may see uh, an initial window here. Um, you can go ahead. Um, you can go ahead and close that. Notice that we didn't see it this time because this has been open before. Um, so this is the basic start start page here. But there's no file open at this point. This is like an introductory page. Okay. So uh, so basically, there's four types of files that you can make with Inventor. Uh, part, drawing, assembly, and presentation. We're going to be focused going on a part file to start out with. If you can imagine a keyboard, say that you had a keyboard. I don't know if you've ever taken apart like an old school keyboard. You know, you'd have basically keys all over the place, okay? Um, if you were to put that keyboard back together, each one of those pieces, those keys, would be an individual part, okay? When you put the whole thing together, the keyboard as a whole with all the parts put together would be an assembly, okay? If you, had an, if you had an assembly or a part and you wanted to make a multi-view drawing, that would be a drawing, okay? And then finally, a presentation is basically a video file where you're, you can explode the parts of an assembly apart and then put them back together as you might expect a presentation, all right? So we have a part, an assembly, a drawing, and a presentation. All right, now to create a part, there's a couple different ways to go. We can either click on part right here. We can go to file click go to new and then click new uh, uh, new and get a list of templates it's like a whole dialogue we can click part from the new menu um, we can also click this down arrow right here to go to new and then and go to the same menu it looks something like this basically we can create a new file in this case we'd want to click standard IPT right here uh, a lot of times new users will cr click sheet metal IPT that's not what you want you want standard IPT I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. I think the easiest way to do it is to go to file, go to new, and gl just click part. Okay, so it takes a second to load up here, and you'll notice that you notice down at the bottom here it says loading, you know, routed system, drag and drop. So it does a bunch of stuff that it's loading. You can actually uncheck that in the settings, and so it doesn't have to load quite so much stuff, and that will reduce the load time uh, for for a part file. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the initial setup. So let's just take a look, uh, or sorry, not the initial setup, this is the initial screen. So let's just take a look at what's happening here, okay? So there's quite a lot of icons, as you can tell, um, and they're split into different regions. So up here at the very top, we have like a standard Windows menu, you know, you have the icon for the program, you've got this, you know, new file thing right here, you've got, um, uh, open dialog, you have save, you know, your standard things up here, okay? You also have a couple of things like um, like um, uh, materials that you can change the parts into. We'll get to that later on. Then you have the ribbon right here. The ribbon can be a little bit tough for people sometimes, okay? So you notice that we have different tabs like cam, manage, view, environments, all of this stuff. Um, we're going to be sticking to 3D model and sketch for this part file. Um, notice this button here, okay? This is one that gets people a lot. This ribbon has a bunch of different modes. And so if you end up going, if you, if you accidentally click it, it can be kind of confusing. So this button right here, we can click this and just click, keep clicking it. And basically, um, basically, it will change the mode from one to another. So basically, if you just keep clicking that button, it will get back to your standard view that you're used to. So that's the ribbon view button right here. Okay, we can click through and it will basically will come back. I think this is the best view to work with. This is my preference right here. Um, okay, the other place that we're gonna look at is on the left here where it says model. This tree view, some people, this is really common view uh, in kind of old style Windows interfaces, but you don't see it that much anymore. Uh, so basically what you have here is you have these pluses that allow you to open things on a tree. If you can look, it's kind of like an outline. We call that a tree view. Um, and what this area is over here is this represents everything that is in your model will be represented on this outline, okay? 
so, so as you create sketches, as you create 3D features, all of that will be represented here. And if you want to go back and edit stuff that's in your model, this is where you would find it. So in this, in this model section on the left here. All right, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch. Um, so basically, uh, uh, everything starts with a sketch in Inventor. So we're going to click Sketch. And we need to select where it's going to be, so which plane it's going to be on. Uh, if you notice, um, the planes right here, so we have the XY, we have the YZ, we have the XZ planes. Um, if I wanted to rotate this, I could take the cube over on the right here, okay? and I could move the cube around. If I have a standard mouse, like a wheel mouse, I can also pan by clicking on the wheel and moving, okay? Um, so that's how you pan, like move, the, move the, um, the drawing back and forth. I think the cube is really useful. You can also click on like one of the views and have it turn automatically, or you can grab it, like click and, click and drag uh, it around. Okay, in choosing in choosing an orient in choosing a plane for your sketch to live on, you can think of a, a sketch as a two D plane. It has no third dimension. Okay, it only has like an x and y axis. It doesn't have a z axis. All right, so we have to choose a plane for it to live on. So in our three D space, we have to put that two D sketch on one of the three planes. If we're going to be like 3D printing or we're just going to keep things as a model or we're going to create a multi view drawing, it may not matter to us. Um, if we were going to go ahead and put this onto like some kind of a, a, a router, like an automated, um, an automated, um, like automated machining application, like some kind of a mill or router, or something like that, it may in fact really matter where we put this sketch. But for us, it doesn't matter. It's kind of um, it's kind of wherever is convenient for us based upon the part we're going to use. It does also matter when we when we choose what where the sketch is going to live. It does matter later on when we do assemblies because if we can, we want to keep things kind of consistent. So I would suggest if you if you don't have a reason to, to do it otherwise, I'd go ahead and say click on this X, XZ plane. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click cancel just so I can do it quickly again so you can guys can kind of follow along. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click um, we're going to go ahead and click uh, uh, start 2D sketch. Okay, click that once. Notice that next to our icon or next to our cursor, we have a um, little pencil icon. We're going to go ahead and click on the XZ plane. Okay, and notice what just happened here. Okay, so when I clicked on that XZ plane, what happened was I went into sketch mode. And you can tell it went into sketch mode because of, because of a couple of different things. One thing that happened was is this tab that says sketch turned blue. Okay, and it switched from 3D model over to the sketch tab. The other thing that happened is this finished sketch uh, icon appeared. So this finished sketch, it has a green check on it. Uh, and we went, basically went into sketch mode, okay? The third thing that happened is this crosshair right here that starts at the origin and goes out, that appeared also on our, on our sketch, all right? So those three things happened. That's how we can tell we're in sketch mode. A very common thing for beginning users is that basically they don't know they're in sketch mode. They create a bunch of sketches or don't understand why they can't do a 3D you know, a feature. Um, and usually that's because they're in sketch mode. Okay, so please be aware, once you make that click and you place your sketch, you're automatically put into sketch mode, okay? All right, so our first lesson here, we're just gonna kind of uh, use a couple of the 2D tools and we're gonna dimension those, uh, those shapes. So, uh, so the first thing we're going to do here is make a line. Okay, so we're going to click the line tool. And in a lot of programs, to make a line, you would click and drag. Like you'd hold down the left, the left button, keep it held down, and move the mouse. That's not how you make a line in Inventor. In Inventor, you click, move the mouse over, and then click to set the, set the second endpoint. Okay, that's how you make a line. All right? If you want to have, make two lines together, so notice, notice that my line continues. So I'm setting the next endpoint. So I click to set the next endpoint. And then if I want to close the shape, I put the cursor back over that original endpoint and see it turn green right there? I want to see that green line, or that, sorry, that green dot. Okay, then I can click and I'm pretty sure that I have a closed shape. A very common problem that people have in Inventor is that they, um, they make a shape using the line tool and they don't close it, okay? So basically having any gaps uh, 
between the lines as you're drawing is a big problem later on. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you see that green dot. Uh, also, if I would say, go back and make another line, notice that when I get over to a point and I, on the line tool that I see that green dot right there. Um, another thing I should mention here is, um, is this uh, origin right here. So, uh, so we're gonna go over uh, some things called constraints later on, which I'm not gonna go into now. Uh, starting your sketch on the origin for more for intermediate and advanced users is a good thing. Okay, so you'd want to start your sketch on the origin if you understand constraints. For your first couple of sketches, it doesn't really matter because we're not going to be like going all the way into assemblies. But basically, if you don't if you don't start your sketch on the origin, it can cause you problems with more advanced drawings later on. Okay, so so if you were doing this, um, you know, starting out, you know and making something in the, in the next, in a little while, you know, after you've gotten a little bit of experience, you'd want to start on the origin, but not, not on your first couple of sketches. Okay, when you're drawing, uh, first you're going to make a drawing, like a 2D uh, sketch, and then you're going to immediately dimension it. The two things go together like, like um, sand and the beach, okay? So, so as soon as you make a line, you want to go ahead and make it and dimension it, okay? In this case, um, I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel. I click into the dimensioning tool. Okay, notice that when I'm in the dimensioning tool, the dimensioning tool stays highlighted. I click on the line, I move the mouse up, and I click to set the dimension, okay? A, 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 um, a box comes up for me to determine the dimension. So let's say that I'm gonna make this uh, one inch uh, long. Okay, notice that, I, notice that the dimensioning tool is not a measuring tool, okay? It's a, it is a, um, or, okay. Notice the dimensioning tool is not a, uh, is not a measuring tool. It's a, it's a place where you're specifying a length, right? So you're basically saying, hey, uh, make this line one inch, not, hey, tell me how long this line is, okay? So when you set the dimension, you're saying, hey, this line is one inch, not, hey, what, how long is this line? Okay, so it's, you're determining it, uh, you're determining the length of a line, not, not measuring it, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead over and notice that we get our dimensioning tool again. I clicked on the line, and I click again. Notice that if I want a different type of dimension, uh, I'm gonna control Z there. So notice that when I clicked on this initially, uh, notice how nothing happened. I brought it out and see how this is like, I, it doesn't appear like this is what I want. So notice I'm getting the height of this line. Okay, so there's a couple different ways of dimension. If you get the wrong dimension, just go back and click on the line a second time and it will come out as the length. Okay, so notice I clicked on the line, I moved the mouse, I clicked again to set the dimension. I'm gonna make this one inch also. I'm gonna do that and notice I'm still in the dimensioning tool. So I'm gonna click on the last line pull it out, it's giving me the height, which I don't want. I go back, I click on the line, I move the mouse back out again, and click click again to set the dimension. I'm gonna make this one inch. Notice I just put one. The default is inches, uh, because we're in the US, and so we're gonna hit enter, and we're gonna make it a one also, okay? Um, zooming, now I have, I have I, I accidentally didn't put a regular mouse on this computer, so usually the, the track wheel, the wheel on the mouse is a zoom wheel, Okay, so it makes it very easy. Oftentimes, uh, new users especially, and even other users will make, uh, will basically lose their drawings in the 3D space. Okay, so if we come over to the left here, uh, I wanna get out of the dimensioning tool because I'm not gonna use it for now. I'm gonna right click and click okay. Notice the dimensioning tool stops, stops uh, being highlighted. If I come over here and notice this zoom toolbar, if I click down, notice that zoom all is checked. If I just click zoom all, notice that basically the, the, the sketch that I've made gets centered and zooms into the visible space on the sketch, okay? All right, the next thing we're gonna do is make a circle, okay? So notice that there are a couple here, circles and ellipse. I'm gonna go ahead and make a circle. I click, move the mouse, click again. I go up to dimension. I click on the outside of the circle, click, move the mouse, click again. I'm gonna set the men dimension to be one inch. I actually I said two inches, whoops. Okay, I'll do it again. Notice that I have a dimension already set. Another common thing that people uh, often get very confused by, notice how I'm, okay, I, I'm in the dimensioning tool right now, right? And I try, I click on the dimension, 
Oh, that's new. Okay. So I can click on the dimension and reset it. Um, in previous versions, you couldn't reset the dimension if you were in dimensioning tools. So there, I just, I just learned something there. Um, okay, so we set it to one inch. That's the circle tool. All right, we also have an ellipse. Okay, so we're going to click. We're going to move the mouse out to give it the width. Click again, and then we're going to open it up to uh, give it a, um, a uh, height. You can also uh, dimension an ellipse, right? Okay, notice that on ellipse, we're going to do the height and width. Okay, so in this case, we're going to go 0 0.5 uh, uh, height there. Okay, and then we can also do the length here. So let's do uh, two inches length. And we have a pretty confusing drawing here going on. Okay, let's go ahead and do an arc. Okay, so we're going to click on an arc. It's a three-point arc. Click one endpoint, click the other endpoint, and then you're kind of bending it. And what you see here is the radius. So you notice there's that dotted line that's going into the center of the circle that the arc is a part of, and then we have the radius. We also can dimension arcs, okay? And we dimension arc based upon the radius of the circle that would contain them, okay? So in this case, we have, uh, let's make that one inch also. Okay, next we have a, a rectangle. Okay, so we're gonna click. There are multiple types of rectangles. Notice we have a three point, one point center. So you can kind of experiment with these. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do the rectangle. So we're gonna click, move the mouse, click again. Then we're gonna bring up the dimension. We're gonna click, move the mouse, click again. Let's make it one inch. We can hit one and then enter. We're still in the dimensioning tool. We're gonna click, move the mouse, click again. Let's make it two inches. I'm gonna zoom all so I can see it. Okay. Um, Notice in the dimensioning tool, I can't move the dimension around, okay? But if I get out of the dimensioning tool, I can click on the dimensioning tool again to, or sorry, I can't click on the control. I have to right click and then click okay. Now I'm out of the dimensioning tool. I can then take the dimension and I can move it. Uh, I can reorganize the dimensions, okay? Uh, notice that as I do the dimensions, you should keep the dimensions outside of the shapes when possible. Okay, so don't kind of, don't, jumble the dimensions inside of the shapes. You should follow along kind of like um, uh, when we're using, when we're learning dimensioning rules, when we're doing uh, drawings, there are a lot of dimensioning rules. As we're, we, they don't really apply in these sketches, but you should make them, you know, you know, visually neat and, you know, uh, useful to you later on. Okay. Uh, so those, this, so that is the basic use of Inventor. Uh, now to get out of a sketch, we're going to go ahead and do finish sketch. So see this green check mark right here? We're going to click finish sketch. Okay, now we're out of the sketch. All right, and notice that now if I click the zoom all, <clears throat> notice on the cube how this basically lives in 3D space now. So it's a two-dimensional plane in 3D space. If I want to go ahead and edit that sketch, I would go back to this explorer bar right here um, in the model tab. Um, and I would double click sketch one. Notice that if I, if I click sketch one and then click again, I'm renaming the sketch, okay? Like the name, right, I'm renaming it. So be careful that you, uh, the, the best way I think to do it is to go over the icon, double click on the icon, and that will get you back in to edit the sketch, okay? Then we can go in, we can say double click on a dimension, make it three inches or something like that, and then click finish sketch, and we're back out to, to our sketch. Okay, so that is that is basically getting started in Inventor. We started Inventor, we went over the part, the types of the files, uh, we opened up a part file, we started a new sketch, we did some 2D sketching and with dimensions. Uh, okay, best of luck. All right, guys. So uh, so basically, what we're going to do at this point is that uh, 